Hey. How are you? What's up? It's so nice going? to be talking to you. I know, right? How are you? I'm good. You're supposed to be training me, but we chose to talk instead. We chose to talk instead for Bloody so good. many reasons. I'm so bad with personal trainers. Um, like they give up on me. They say, Makosi, we don't want your money because you don't do. You don't want to work with us. So why should I be taking your money every month if you don't want to work with us? I'm here. Okay. Uh -huh. So, Ma Maji Aida. That's how I pronounce your name, right? Yeah, Maje Aida. Maje? Yeah, Maje Aida. Okay, so Maje Aida is a wellness coach in Lagos. And I came across you when I had breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And you, like I was just reading your Eden wellness, your column. Yes, yes, um, Eden lifestyle. And then I, I don't know who reached out to who, but I think I reached out to you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you just, you were part of my journey. Let's put it that way. I think I reached out to you because I kept kind of commenting on what I perceived to be your awesomeness. Oh. <laughs> you know? So and I think that's where, that's where it started. Oh, thank you so much. Yes. But um, your, your mom went through a similar journey. Yes. Unfortunately, she, uh, she lost that battle. But um, yes, she did. It was it, it ripped through our family like a tornado. Honestly, it was um, it was very traumatizing for someone who was pretty much the rock in our family. But, you know, some things stood out. And I think that's why I kind of resonated with you, actually, um, was her dignity through her entire ordeal. You know, I remember clearly when she would come back from chemo and knowing what she had been through and still being selfless enough to be concerned about us and where we are, you know, right to the end, it was always about us, the kids, you know, and, and making sure that we're all okay, you know, which is one of the most, um, which is one of the most, the hardest parts for me to kind of stomach was the fact that, um, I didn't start anything I was doing while she was alive, you know, and um, I would have loved to, for her to have seen this because I was one of her, I'm the youngest of my siblings, you know? So at the time- The baby of the family. Yes. At the time it was like, you know, just, I just want you to be okay, you know, now that it's finally done. So it was, it was, it was tough, but um, I can't imagine what she went through so you probably can speak better on her actual experiences. All I got was, you know, the got to see how she was afterwards each day, the days when she was up, the days when she was down. And all the while through, she maintained a steady line of dignity, which was just beautiful for us, you know, um, right to the end. It was wonderful. Do you think, do you think your mom's, uh, journey with cancer got you here yes yes wow can Absolutely. you tell me a little bit about that um okay well before before she passed um you know we i really had pretty much followed what my family had set out for me you know we i come from a banking background a banking family and pretty much that was it this is what you're doing and that's the end of that you know but of course along the way i really wasn't getting any fulfillment from it i was very mediocre at it because i really wasn't into it in that right. way you know um but what why it uh, impacted me so much is i really felt lost when i lost her i really felt like i had no purpose just kind of floating in the wind like what why am i here what am i on this earth for all this while, it's been very nice and cozy. You know, you've got your parents and they take care of everything and everything's good, you know, without thinking about what you are here for. Mm -hmm. So um, after she died, me and my brother went off on a road trip across America, actually. We went, you know, driving. Um, we went to Florida. Um, so sort of shuttling between Florida and Atlanta. And on this long, endless, seemingly endless road, the, I think it was the I-95, driving along, 
and it hit me that I'm, I don't know where I'm going. So I decided that I needed to find why I am here. And that is when I connected with a life coach. My sister, actually, my oldest sister, huh? you see, this service is something, right? So my oldest sister, um, she said that, look, she's got this amazing friend of hers. Her name is Shola Cotton. She's a life coach. And she just wants me to talk to her. Just, just talk. Because I didn't know anything about that. I didn't believe in any of that. I, well, not that I didn't believe in it, but I just wasn't aware of it, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I just, I was like, well, look, I'll try anything at this point in time because I really don't know what I'm doing. Um, and I sat down and, and we had a coffee and I had a conversation that changed my entire life and my entire direction. And, and she didn't really say anything that was mind blowing to me. It was the questions that she asked me, right? And one of the key questions that she asked me was, what brings you alive? What, exactly. Tell me, tell me, she, she didn't even phrase it that way. You know, it was more a case of, tell me all the things that interest you. Tell me, tell me everything. Like, you know, I, I know you've had some business ideas and little things. So just talk to me about it. So I took her through this list of all these ideas that I had at the time because I had left 10 years of banking and now I was kind of floating in the wind. Mm -hmm. moonlighting in my brother's office because he had a factory at the time so i was just literally there just to say i have an office to go to you know right. somewhere to, somewhere to go and everything so um she asked me these things i reeled off all these things to her and she goes you know what all your ideas are pretty interesting i love what you're saying but when you spoke about fitness about the ideas you have for fitness in nigeria you lit up like a christmas tree so Maybe that's something. And wow. I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to check that out. And I never looked back. Literally, just I did not look back. But what was important in that transition was that it wasn't half-hearted. It wasn't like, okay, let me try this. Right. I had to recreate myself completely. I had to embody this. I had to live and breathe it like it was all I knew because it was right. all I wanted. Once I realized that this was something that really lit me up. I made my very being about it. And I think that is what made the difference. It's not enough to just say, I'm going to go after something. You have to, you know, speak it into the universe. You have to make it, once your entire being is about it, the universe responds. It's, uh, it's not enough to just say it, mm -hmm. you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's got to be embodied in every way. So that was really such a, major step for me it changed the trajectory of my life i just woke up one morning and said this is what i am i didn't have the qualifications i didn't wasn't sure the steps i was going to take but i said this is who i am now and and everybody around me that was my message this is who i am now this is what i'm doing now and i really do believe in the power of thinking that you know just the way you think about something it makes such a huge difference so and and the conviction that I had in saying it, I think, is what spread. And that's why they're like, okay, you know what? I believe you. I didn't yeah. believe that other stuff you were saying, yeah. but mm -hmm. you have a different look. You have a different conviction here. And, um, yeah, it was really pretty, pretty special for me, uh, that, so that's that part how of my you, journey. That's how you birthed Hit Squad. Well, not straight away. Um, okay. You know, I, I needed, I'd already created Eden Lifestyle, actually. Right. Because That's I what I found the, first. Yeah. Eden Lifestyle is the, is the umbrella. That is the umbrella right. company. Okay. Hit Squad is a part of it. Hit Squad is like the fitness arm of Eden Lifestyle. Eden oh, Lifestyle is all my wellness services. Yeah. But um, I birthed that actually um, standing on a basketball court in Abuja. I was still living in Abuja at the time. And I used you know, I love sports. I would always go find where I can play sports, especially basketball, right? That's why I love your picture, holding the basketball. Awesome. It's my favorite sport. Money. That's money. So, um, so I'm like uh, standing on the basketball court in Abuja, and I thought, you know what? This is the only place in Abuja. You know Abuja well. Back then, there was the Hilton and nothing else. Really? It was just the Nikon Hilton, and that was the only place that you could go for exercise, to play basketball, to use the gym. You know, it was pretty much the hub of Abuja. That's where everybody would go. 
So that was the only place I could exercise. And, and if they were doing any kind of renovations, that was it. You know, and then the law, the rules they had for women as well, like, you know, women not being able to just walk into a hotel. I found that ludicrous. Really? Yeah, it's still there. It's still there till now. You would know because you don't operate on this planet. You are disco <laughs> you are, you know, a different being. The normal people <laughs> have issues when they go to hotels, women. Really? You, know? you don't know this? No. You must know this. Okay, okay, so for me it's two part. Yeah. I try not to go to hotels. All right. I just literally just avoid them. Okay. And when I do go, I'm going to maybe it's a business meeting yes. or you know, so I don't really I'm not aware of the okay. service that's happening. That's what I'm me. saying. You know, yeah. you're not connected to it. But the truth is that as a woman, you walk into a hotel alone, you get questioned. Like who you hear to How see. How sad, though. It's, it's it's archaic. It's sad, but it's still a reality, you know. And it was even worse back then. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna set something up. I'm I'm gonna create a fitness organization where I can have my own gyms, where I can have, you know, rollouts gyms. There need to be gyms everywhere, and that's where the whole idea started to sort of kick off in my head about getting into this. And when looking for a name for a company. Um, Eden just was just there. It was actually my girlfriend at the time. I was like, hey, why do you call this Eden? You know? Oh, I thought, like, I thought her name was Eden. No, 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 no. It's just the idea. Having a conversation. You know what I mean? So does she get royalties? <laughs> yeah. Till today. Till today. I'll always I'll never forget that. But the, but, but the idea was that... Um, Starting a, a journey like this is a total reinvention. You know, it's a new beginning. It's a new genesis. It and is. that was where the name Eden came from um, as a lifestyle. I looked at it like a reconstruction, you know. So um, that was it. His squad came actually a bit later. Um, that came from a place of, I mean, it's kind of depressing, but it came from a place of darkness, I have to say. Okay. Because that's just what it was. I was going through a pretty epic period in my life. Um, I, at the time, my marriage had kind of collapsed and I was dealing with a lot of media issues with it, right? So um, I had got into, retreated into my own version of self-isolation at the time. Um, wasn't really communicating much with people. I kind of locked myself away from the world. But I learned a lot of things during that time. I tell learned. Tell me what you learned. I'll tell you one key thing I learned. Yeah. I will share it with you. Yeah. I learned that, and I use this in a lot of my work today, mm -hmm. you know. I learned that in your darkest period, you can create your best work. I have to right? write that down. In your darkest times, in your darkest period, you can create your best work. You have the capacity to. That is something that has been put inside us it is god-given you know why do we get better when we meet the most resistance why do we get stronger when we resistance train you know my fitness is very keyed into the whole philosophy yeah. of this transformation right mm -hmm. so um it's because under pressure you know call to diamond you can create your best work in the dark right right so, so that's and, how so um, that's how I came up with the hit squad. It's a product of pain. It's a product of pain. It's a product of pain. It's a product of, um, I guess, pain, despair, feeling lost again, looking for a new direction. Eden lifestyle was very much alive, but it's not like I was looking for something. But I find that when you are very still, when you are very quiet, which is why I really love meditation, you know, which is when, when you're in a very still place, a lot of ideas come to you. When you're physically active, your creativity mm. is really stimulated, you know? Right. So um, I, I had started on a workout journey on my own um, at the time because I was like, just, I was alone. So I just thought, you know what, let me start a workout journey. Mm -hmm. Hooked up with a trainer. I'd never actually worked out with a trainer till at that time. So while I was going through this period, ideas just started to come to me. To I you, did. Yeah. And, you know, I, I was looking at a lot of things and I came up with the hit squad because interval training, 
body weight exercises were, you know, CNN was calling it the next big thing at the time. You know, HIIT wasn't really a big deal. Now it's one of the top forms of exercise. Yeah. You know, so, mm -hmm. but, so, and I just saw, and I thought, you know what, for a country that people, you know, have to deal with traffic, have to deal with so many barriers to exercise, this is the perfect way. Being able to just train, do body weight exercises at home. And guess what? Look at where we are now. Look at where we are now. Everybody's home workouts. Uh, and you, you literally do like you look, you do sessions with people, right? Yes, I do. And I if do. they want to, if they want to do it on Instagram, they can do it on Instagram. If you want to do it live with people watching, that's your own. If you want to do it private, we're here. But we do have. Yeah, a video I think I'll take my service, private. You know? I think I'll take mine private. Yeah. Unless you're doing a group session. We're about to launch group training, actually. Really? Mm -hmm. um, Tell me about group, that. Um, that's just going to be, it's like group workouts on Zoom. On Zoom? So you can have group classes, yes, absolutely. So, so myself and my trainers, each one of my trainers is certified. We'll be running group classes. Uh, it's a lot more affordable than personal training, of course. Exactly. I think it know. is. And safety in numbers. Right there, there is safety in numbers. You yeah. said something about being in isolation when you started the HIT uh, squad. Yes, absolutely. And did you find that when you were in this period of your life, there was not much... You Did you realize that there was not much you could control? I'm going to come to that. Um, <laughs> I think that one of the biggest takeaways right now in what's happening is the feeling of being powerless. Um, so much is out of our control. You know, we are really very powerless right now. And one of the first tips in, in mental health and having good mental health is in focusing the things that, on things that you can control, things that are in your right. control, as opposed to what's not. Right. We spend so much time worrying, creating anxiety, stressing ourselves out over things that are out of our control. So mm -hmm. at the time, okay, dealing with a major media storm, I mm -hmm. was having counseling. I had no right. shame. I thought it was okay. awesome. It was an amazing mm -hmm. time, actually. I learned so much in counseling. And that was one of the reasons why I actually started a counseling service. Um, mm -hmm. we, have, we run a 24-hour counseling service, by the way. Just throw that out there. Okay. Um, it's more of a corporate service. Um, so it's called an EAP service, Employee Assistant uh -huh. Program, mm -hmm. which is where we provide counseling services to companies so that staff members can have on, you know, basically paid for by the company, but right. they get sessions, telephonic sessions with counselors, etc. So I started that service based on counseling that I went through and how much it taught me. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things, again, was to control. Control is so important. You can't control other people's actions. You can't control the way other people think. You can't control the way they interact with you. You can't control, you're not in control of the economy. You're not in control, definitely, of, the, of COVID right now. Right. You're not in control of the, the decisions government make, local governments make. You're not in, in control. Look at what's going on outside right now as we speak. Have you seen videos of people at banks and stuff? What's going on out there? I see. It's... It it's it's, in, it's insane. Yeah. Now, you can sit here and be anxious about that or realize that you're not in control of that. What you are in control of is you. You don't have to get up and go and join that melee. Right. You, know, you can find your solutions as to how you're going to deal with that. I have banking to do today. I have to find another way, et cetera. But it's, it's a control thing. And, and this, is, this is one thing that I want to talk to you about today, okay? I, I read this thing yesterday, and I thought it was so cool. All right. We are in the COVID era. We are under the watch of the coronavirus right now. It's literally at your doorstep. It's, it's, it's an invisible force that has turned this world upside down. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there are five C's. The letter C, Corona. Okay. COVID. There are five C's that I think everybody should tune into. All right. Mm -hmm. The first one is what we are talking about right now, control. Mm -hmm. Control. Okay? Control is number one. You've got to, I, I try as much as possible, and this is what works for me. No, you can put your hand down. I'm going to talk about each one individually. Or should I just tell you all of them now? No, 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 no. Do it the way you, you teach okay. it well. All right. Great, great, great. So, control. You need to, 
focus on what you are in control of. Okay? That is yourself. The way you think. What you eat. How you sleep. How you exercise. What you consume. The soul food that you consume. All right? So, fear is one of the biggest things that's happening right now, right? So many people are afraid. We're all afraid of what's going to happen, what's going to be, how the world is changing. Terrified. And if you are part of, you know, WhatsApp groups, the fear is spread even more there. I mean, constantly we're getting videos of death tolls and this is the new thing. It's airborne right now. If you go, you breathe it, you're going to get it, and, you know, and so on and so forth. It's, it's frightening. And you saw, I know you commented, so you saw what I posted today, right? About that, the, the killer hornet, like, the killer wasp. Is this not enough for us to be afraid of COVID? Why are you bringing something else? And this is a trend. This is the trend in the news. The trend is fear. That's why you have, it's almost like, you know, it's like you're watching some sports game where you see the death toll and the number of people who have corona. It's there full time, constantly climbing. You know, there is a fear factor here that I don't know why they want to keep us afraid, but we are. You won. We're afraid. Congratulations. Okay. But um, you have the power to control how much of that you take in. Mm. You have the power to control. I'll tell you something. Mm -hmm. um this is my second week i have not turned on my tv thank you i'm just not i, I don't even want to bump into an advert or yeah. so i don't just i don't turn the thing on i know i know wear a mask don't wear a mask wear this type of mask if you wear this mask it's not gonna work this one you know it's it's crazy but it's not for Oh, come back. Come back. That is so good. You know, okay. So you can, you can still hear me, right? So you can, you can put yourself mm -hmm. on a news diet. Okay, while it's still good to know what's going on out there, I mean, you don't want to miss out when Lagos State or FCT announces some new thing. You don't want to be the one that walks out and gets arrested, right? So it's good to know... It's good to know what's going on to a certain degree, but I, I always I recommend a, a, some sort of a news diet where you right. allocate a certain time of day to when you will actually watch the news just to see what's going on and maybe try as much as possible not to get caught up in these group chats where people are literally spreading fear. False information is, you know, that's another thing as well, you know, fake news, etc. Et so, yeah. so it's very important to control things because they, they're, it's all connected. You got, you're in control of your sleep. A lot of, I get a lot of complaints of people whose sleep patterns have been completely disrupted by this, right? Okay, so you're in control of, of your sleep patterns. You can maintain your sleep because that's important. Yes. You know what happens if you don't sleep enough, first of all. For those of you on weight loss journeys, etc., if you don't know, not getting enough sleep actually increases the amount of cortisol in your body, which is a stress hormone, all right? Which means that you... Put on weight. It's very simple. If you don't sleep enough, it's harder to lose weight, much harder to lose weight because you're literally putting on weight with lack of sleep. With, Cortisol okay. directly leads to you retaining weight. It's known. Check it out. That's a biological thing. Okay, so yeah. focus on the things you can control. Okay, very important step. The second C, all right, is continuity. Okay. Uh -huh. I'll tell you what that is. That is, you know, before lockdown, before the world basically turned upside down, a lot of us lived with routines. Okay. Very important, especially if there are kids involved. Kids need routine and stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that you should live a regimented life in this lockdown period or if you are struggling with this feeling of powerlessness and anxiety and stress and possibly even depression. All I'm saying is some form of a routine works for me. It absolutely works for me. I, okay. I, and, and I've seen it in too many instances to overlook it, you know? So if my routine is just to get through today without stabbing anybody, then so be it, All right? right. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it starts with you waking up in the morning or whatever time you want to wake up. 
It starts with you having a shower. It starts with you making your bed, okay? It starts with you decluttering your environment. Right. It starts with you exercising. It starts with you sleeping enough. It starts with you planning what you're going to eat. I advise maybe divide your day into four quarters. Okay. And set yourself some form of a goal for each quarter. Okay. 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 If if my first quarter goal of the day is to exercise, there is a sense of achievement, of accomplishment that mm -hmm. naturally sets your mind up to do something else, to achieve something else. If my second quarter goal is to watch Netflix for two hours, so be it. It's scheduled. If my third quarter goal is to play with my kids for two hours, is to read a book, is to go for a walk, whatever it may be, the point is, the more structured you are, the more structured you are up here, the more organized you are. And in this life, you know, I don't care who you are. You've got to have some sort of purpose, right? Some sort of goal. As a human being, I think we're designed for that. I don't really buy into a lot of talk out there of you have to achieve all these amazing things under lockdown and be super, super inspirational in this person. I just think that, you know, we are, we are in a survival mode right now. People, a lot yeah. of people are thinking about just surviving and just getting through this period. But hey, do we know how long this period is going to go on for? We don't know. And that's another part of the powerless aspect of it. We, we don't know where, how long we're going to be in this for. So I'm trying to personally transition from survival mode to thriving. We're here. This is where we are. Uh -huh. Are you going to keep surviving or are you going to start thriving? Because some people are going to thrive. Some people are going to make it. Some people are going to be doing things. Some people already are achieving a lot. Now, I'm not going to start measuring what achievements are in this conversation. Like I said, achievement can just be getting through today and staying happy. That's True. already good enough, you know? But yeah. the fact is that we all need some level of purpose. And what made me enter a dark place was feeling like I had no purpose. What brought me out of that was creating a purpose. And it's something that you can create. Mm. Okay, this is what I said. You can create any life you want. Right. It doesn't matter. It's hard work. Yeah, it's tough. You've got to live it and breathe it, but you can create any but life you, you want. It. And that starts with the decision that I'm going to create this life and I'm going to be this particular way. So it's very, very important, I think, that you accomplish things by setting yourself routines so you can start something and finish it and move on to the next, next task for your own well-being so that you're not completely out of control. You are powerless, focus on things that you are in control of and you have power. Okay, So that control directly leads to continuity, continuity. and that comes in routine. Okay. Task for you guys at home. Okay. Set up a habit. One okay. routine. Okay. Mm -hmm. One routine. A lot of us set up, set our alarms in the morning, right? You want to wake up for whatever the reason and hit that snooze button over and over and over again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Get up in the morning when that alarm goes off, even if you're going to get back into bed, but get up, brush your teeth, do your thing. Then do a five minute workout. Five minute workout, five minutes, okay? I'll tell you exactly what to do. I set this task for somebody else as well, okay? okay. Do, do one minute of jumping jacks, all right? One minute of jumping jacks. I know you hate jumping jacks, <laughs> <laughs> so don't look at me like that. <laughs> you can find what you can replace it with, okay? Okay. Do one minute of jumping jacks, do one minute of squats, and do one minute of running on the spot, okay? Mm -hmm. All right? And you're going to take 30 seconds in between each of those. Right. Okay? Take 30 yeah. second break, do the next. Take 30 second break, do the next thing. Start with jumping jacks, finish with running on the spot. That is all. Start really? every morning. Start every morning like that. Okay? Every morning. Start it like that. And after a two-week period... Check back with yourself and how you feel. Check back with yourself 
on how you feel when you wake up in the morning. If one of your problems is you wake up in the morning and you feel tired, you feel tired already. A lot of people have that low energy, unmotivated, right. especially in this period where you, you might have just lost your job. True. You might not have a reason to wake up in the morning. You might not have a reason to get out of bed. Bed, yeah. Set yourself this task. And I say this with, you know, with the utmost respect for how difficult it is. But yeah. if in doubt, go work out. Thank you so much for saying that. Thank you so much for mentioning that um, as much as, as hard as it can sound for other people, because the other reason, the, the one re good reason I really wanted to talk to you about is the tone of self-compassion that I see in your posts. Mm -hmm. um, there are, um, what's the word? They, they bring sanity mm -hmm. to me. Because sometimes, um, as you just said, when we're in survival mode, um, as coaches, if we're not careful, we're coming out here saying, oh, you you got to transform your life. you got to do this. Yeah, and, yeah. and when you check at the, at the foundation of why we're doing that is because at the end of the day, the person is going to come and pay for me to help them get there. Mm -hmm. um, so I found that two, three weeks ago, I started, I started with having self-compassion for myself. Mm. I started mm. saying, you know what, Makosi, if you, if you don't get to do this, it's okay. Yeah. If you yeah. don't get to, because I've always, okay, so the backstory is I've always had issues with my temperature, mm -hmm. whether I'm well or not. My temperature mm -hmm. is like 37.4 and whatever. So the first hurdle I got with all this COVID thing is I couldn't get into shops. Mm -hmm. Um, you take so, the temperature and you're like, already and, there. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, Oh, sorry, you can't, you can't get in. And I, I, I just really needed to, to, to have self compassion. So I really love the fact that as much as, and I think it comes from, you're not, you're not teaching or coaching out of what you went to school to do. You're teaching and coaching out of experience, mm. and that's solid. Yes. You, you've gone through counseling. You've gone through. You, you're, 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 you come here and you suggest to pull us out of a place you've been yourself. So Absolutely. that's really important Absolutely. to me. It's, Sorry to interrupt you. You were on your third have, seat. No, it's okay. Okay. It's, it's what I've built my whole philosophy on, is on experience. You know, right. um, it's really easy to sit there and preach, you know, about things that you read without knowing what it is to go through it. You know, yeah, I didn't start. OK, I lost you again. I'm here. OK. All right. Good. I got you. I got you. I didn't start phys coaching um, workouts until I went through the process of being coached myself yourself with a personal okay. trainer. And I knew what it was to be on the floor. I can't get up anymore. Give me two more. Give me three more. I've pushed myself, taken myself to the wall to know that you can do it. So right. my whole coaching philosophy is based on making you believe that you can do it. Okay. Believe in yourself. Right? Which brings mm -hmm. me to my third C, which mm -hmm. is basically what you just pointed out. Compassion. Okay? Mm -hmm. Compassion. You must be compassionate, not just to yourself, but to the people around you as well. That's, right. it's, to a certain degree, that's empathy, self-empathy, empathy to others. Okay, Very right. important cornerstone um, as a meta skill, okay? right. being a meta human. So compassion is very important. You can't, and that's why I talked about you know, the, the goals and achieving things during the day in this area. You can't sit there and compare yourself to what you see you got to measure from within. And if today my only goal is just to be happy today, I want to finish today with a smile, okay? Mm -hmm. Even if I don't achieve anything, that's okay. It's nothing to, there's no measuring stick here. And so don't buy into what is being sold out there, which mm -hmm. is this is what productivity looks like. This is what achievement looks like. 
Right. You set your own yardstick, okay? Yeah. But you must be compassionate to yourself. You must right. be compassionate to other people in terms of what they may be experiencing, okay? Mm-hmm. People are going through some shit right now, all right? And it's real. And just a phone call, connecting, human contact. We are social beings, okay? Some people are so alone, so isolated. that They might not have spoken to somebody for like a week, heard a voice on the phone. Yeah. They might not have smiled. Some pe- I ask people this. Check yourself. When was the last time you smiled about something? You know? And some people have to think, like, well, I, I, I guess I smiled this morning, or was it last night? You know, it's, it gets that bad sometimes. And so I think being compassionate as a human being is very, very important not judging and so on and so forth. And it's, it's, it's easy to say, it's hard to do because we're naturally judgmental beings. It's, it's so normal, <laughs> you know? So, but, but just, just, just highlight that, that, that compassion for yourself is just as important as the compassion you have for other people as well, okay? All right, so that is, that's three C's I've given you, right? That's three C's. I've given you control, continuity, compassion, okay? So, very, very important now is care. care. Okay? That falls under the category of self-care, especially. That's about that. So you have to jealously guard your own emotional, mental, and physical well-being. Mm-hmm. All right? Mm-hmm. If you're not sleeping enough, it's not a bragging point. It's not cool to say, hey, I was so busy. I only slept for two hours. <laughs> like, cool. All right? So your body physically breaks down. Yeah. You know? So the point is that, you know, you've got to, self-care is so important right now. Not just because of what we're under, but just in life in general. Mm. Okay. You've got to guard how much sleep you're getting. Do you want to be productive? I can guarantee you with very little sleep, you are not a super productive human being. No. Just in terms of, you know, the way you do things, the diligence with which you work. I'm a yeah. big believer in hard work. It, it's in, you can't get around it. I, I don't buy into shortcuts because there's a lesson in the process of the work. It's teaching us something so important. Teaching. there we are okay okay you're back excellent we're back we're back okay so um talking about care are you kind of frozen now yeah again so um you were talking about uh the importance of hard work yes 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 i was talking about the importance of work and like there's no there's no shortcut there's no way around it because there is an education in that process of the work the hardship you know, mm-hmm. I follow this guy called Gary V, who I love. Absolutely love, okay? He's my guy. He's because amazing. He tells it like it is, you know? Yeah. And, you, you, and he talks about falling in love with bleeding, you know? That there's something in that process. And I tell you what, when you are, and I, I love working, using workout analogies because it's, it's, it's so right there for you, you know? When it's the easiest way to connect to what it means. When right. you're in the process of working out and you're pushing it and so on and so forth, it sucks. It is hard. I don't like how it feels. I don't enjoy working out that much, okay? Forget what I do for a living. I actually don't enjoy it. Going and working out is it's hard. It's not easy. It's not, you know? And I, so I really respect clients that are having trouble, that are struggling, you know, that can't motivate themselves. I respect it so much because I know how hard it is and I've been there. But I don't focus on how I look. I don't focus on that hard part. I focus on how I feel as soon as I'm done. Exactly. I'm in love with the results. You you cannot, not even the results, just how I feel in that moment. When I finish, I, 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 I never regret doing a workout. 
because I just feel like I'm ready to do anything when I'm done. You can you know? conquer the world. I tell you, and if I could put that in a bottle and sell it, I would, I swear. But you can't. Wow. You've got to do the work to get it. Yeah. You know? so, um, so I think that self-care, again, everything that we've kind of been talking about is kind of tied into self-care. The news diet is self-care. Right. Getting enough sleep and being very regimented about that sleep is self-care. Is self-care, yeah. The conversations you have with people is self-care. The interactions self you have is self-care. Going for a walk, connecting with nature, getting your vitamin D, very important, is self-care. And even if you're just going out on your balcony, please. Guys, nature is a powerful, powerful force. It's a powerful tool at our disposal. Being indoors in your air conditioning 24-7, you're not doing yourself any favors. Get out there, no. get a dose of sunshine. Breathe a little bit. I, last year, okay, again, I would love to give you experiences that I had. Last year, I kind of fell out of working out for about three months. I got hurt. I couldn't exercise. Oh. So I was out of it for three months. And that really messed with my psyche, I tell you. So when I finally got back into a place where I could exercise, I had put on a bit of weight. I wasn't feeling great. But I got back into my workouts. But I changed something. I added walking to my workouts. Okay? Right. And that was like night and day. It made a huge difference. I really understood the value of not just exercising just that once in the day, but being mm -hmm. active throughout your day. So I talked right. about breaking your day into quarters, right? Yeah. Okay. In each of those quarters, schedule a walk. It's magic. In each of the quarter. Schedule a walk, yes. Even, okay. if, even if it's just up your street and back, you know? You can just walk the length right. of your street and back. Even a five-minute walk does the okay. trick. Okay? Okay. Even walking around your living room without even leaving your home does the trick. Okay? okay. But schedule it. These are all things that are part of the whole self-care routine. Self-care. Because mm -hmm. you can't pour from an empty cup. Facts. You just can't do it. It sucks. Mm. And, you know, when, when you are facing an uphill struggle, when you are fighting things, compassion for yourself, self-care, gratitude. My God, gratitude. You know Gary Vee talks a lot about gratitude. I talk yes. a lot about gratitude. Yeah. We have a lot of synergy there. I can't compare it to where he is, obviously. But, you know, gratitude is so important. Again, in my darkest periods in life, learning real, true gratitude, as in, I'm walking, I'm talking, I'm breathing, I have a roof, I'm in my present moment, I have my air conditioning, so I'm cool, thank God there's electricity right now, but if there was no electricity, I have a generator that I can put on. Yeah. My God, I have nothing to complain about, right. for real, you know? Yeah. That for me is the essence of gratitude, and if I need a reminder as to what that is, my, I have a beautiful niece, okay? She's in a wheelchair. She got pilots. Oh, I've seen her, okay? yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful, beautiful person, beautiful soul. It changed her life. It changed her family's life. My sister is a warrior looking after her, you know, and, and her sister and her brother. But again, her grace, her display of gratitude, she writes letters to us thanking us periodically. I'm like, why? You know? And you sit down with her for a second, it, it does, it changes your perspective as to the things that you're running off and complaining about. And I'm not saying you shouldn't ever complain. Jesus, yeah. we're human beings. Complain. Look, you're not happy with something called complain. All I'm talking about is when people unpack and live in a mental space for long periods of time, that is where things like depression start to kick in. You stay in a particular state. So you do not feel what you feel. Let it move through you as a human being. If it's anger, if it's sadness, 
you know, loss, you're happy, whatever it is, let it move through you. But yeah. just do not unpack and live in that space. Right. See, right. one thing I learned about humans, because I've done it, is we, we, we use our emotions as a crutch sometimes for mm -hmm. behavioral patterns. Okay? Right. Take, for example, I have a bad experience right now. Okay? Puts me in a bad mood. That bad mood, I, people can exist and live in that bad mood for hours on end because it gives them a license to behave however yeah. they want to be. Yeah. To speak to people how they want to speak to people. Yeah. Don't mess with me. I'm in a mood. Don't talk to me funny. I wish, I wish you would. You know, it's, <laughs> it's that kind of thing. Um, and that's just not good enough as far as I'm concerned because we are in control of our emotions as human beings. We are. We are masters of our emotions, emotional mastery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we are ruled by our emotions most of the time. So there's a constant learning curve here about being in control of our emotions. Yeah. Exercise is a great tool for taking control of that. Yeah. You know, exercise is a great tool to learn gratitude. Yeah. Exercise is a great do tool to learn compassion. So many things. And I'll tell you again, and this is an exercise that I put people through, especially when I deal with like give talks and stuff. Yeah. I put them through uh, like a, a, a short workout routine, usually about 30 seconds. Okay. And it could be something simple, like just marching, okay, or just waving your arms around. But you do anything for a sustained period of time, you start to feel it. If you just hold your arm out straight in front of you, it's fine like this, but you hold it out for two minutes, it starts to hurt. It starts to you hurt. start to feel the weight of your arm. It starts yeah. to bear down on you, okay? Yeah. But in those last few seconds, okay, after whatever it is you're doing, waving your arms around, your mind starts to really, really become conscious. You start to, it's, it's like meditation. It's about mm -hmm. having a conscious moment. Mm -hmm. And every day we should have a moment of consciousness in our lives, okay? And that workout period, for those few seconds where you are at a point where this hurts, I can't go on, I'm waving my arms, you are present. You're nowhere else. You're not mm -hmm. in the future. You're not in the past. You're not thinking about where you got to go. You're not thinking about what you have experienced or whatever stress you have. You're literally in that moment, in that exercise moment. Mm -hmm. And that's what I try and I hope people can tune into. Because at that moment, you really do have your most clarity, which is why when you come out of a good workout, my God, you are in such a level of consciousness and in a creative space. Yeah. In a creative zone. You're in a decision-making zone, you know? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that can happen in the, like lockdown and isolation is decision fatigue, where because you're not planning anything, you start deciding, oh, oh what should I watch? You could spend an hour, what can I watch? I don't know what to watch. Or oh, what should I read? Or who should I call? You're unplanned. You eat up so much time yeah. thinking about making a decision. Mm -hmm. It's so cool how, um, what's his face? Facebook guy, Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Wears the same t-shirt, right? Yeah. Why? Efficiency. He doesn't yeah. have to think. Mm. You know? And mm. that, that really resonated with me. I love that ideal, you know, where mm. you and, and that can be eliminated just simply by planning ahead. Sunday evening, you start faffing around. Just take twenty minutes, fifteen minutes, and just plan the first three days of your week. Right. Split your day into quarters and set yourself little things that you want to do. And each of those days starts with that one task make your bed and i don't mean get your cook to make your bed or get your maid to make your bed or instruct whoever it is make my bed no i mean make you, it yourself your exercise make it yourself all right it's a wonderful thing it seems really mundane it seems really unnecessary especially if you've got other people that do it for you but there is something in that task alone that sets you up for achievement for the rest of the day okay right. so mm -hmm. control continuity, continuity compassion, compassion care, care and i've touched on the fifth one already creativity creativity mm -hmm. creativity Elaborate. why why creativity why do you think creativity you tell me why do I think creativity is such an important what, thing? 
It's such an important tool as part of the five C's. Okay, so Why is personally, matter? personally for me, creativity is, is, is also a part of continuity for me. Like mm -hmm. I have to keep creating so that I'm not, I'm not stagnant. Yes. I'm not stagnant with, with yesterday. I, I'm never impressed with yesterday's results. I mm -hmm. always want today's results to be um, in the most compassionate way to myself. I want today to be better than yesterday. So yes. I think I express, I think I express that through the stuff that I create. I don't mm -hmm. know. I like it. You're oh. right. Oh, there's no right or wrong answer. It wasn't really a, a, a quiz. I was just curious to know what you thought. Yeah. Honestly. You know, but yes, you know, we are, our God is a creator. I, I'm not, I'm trying not to get religious here, but you know, our God is a creator. We were created. And if we are created in his image, we are creative beings. That's why we have creativity. We have talent. We have so much. And I think that our individual unique gift to the world is based in creativity, in what we create from ourselves, from within. That is our gift. Whatever it is that you're creating, be it a book, be it art, be it film, you know, whatever it is, I just think that we all have this creativity within us that is part of our purpose, somehow tied into our purpose and needs to be activated and the things that we've talked about from the exercise point of view and all that just further stimulates that creativity. Why I found myself at my most creative in my darkest points. Why I have found myself at my most creative when I'm exercising, when I'm really at my best, you know? When I'm putting in that work and the exercise, I tend to get more creative. So I think that we all have a unique gift to give to this world in some way. You know, um, and I think that that is our creativity, what we create, the things I, I love being, I love my, creating original content, you know, it's just yeah. what I do. If you see my feed, I don't generally repost a lot of things that have been created. I just like to create something right. that Your I own know that stuff. is, you know, my own stuff. That's just me. Whoever you are and whatever works for you, that's cool. But I just know that each in each and every one of us, there is something that is a gift to the world in whatever way it is. Use it, find it, unleash it. Because that's when you're at your best. What a way. I hope you come back. What do I like no. life, You're back. I, Good. I Good. To Good. Say bye -bye. Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. What a way to start the week, guys. Majay, you're always saying never miss a Monday. And I think Monday is your magic day. It's a magic day, man. I'm excited by Mondays. Honestly. When people so, talk about oh, Monday, Monday, Monday's like, what? That's when you get to suit up and it life, you know? And just go in there. Thank you. Like, thank you so much for the five C's of this uh, season, which are control, continuity, compassion, care, and creativity. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing that I'm taking away from this are dividing my day into four. Um, I've mm -hmm. already written that out. And you've also told us to do like a five-minute workout which is jumping mm -hmm. jacks mm -hmm. for one minute, squat <laughs> for one minute, uh, running on the spot for one minute, and th taking 30-minute breaks. 30 seconds between so, each one. You see how, this is how I give my personal trainers work. I would really uh -huh. want to rest for 30 minutes. You would want to rest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing that I got from today is planning your day ahead, planning your your week ahead on a Sunday evening, 
um, I love the f I love 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 the fact that you know you have been coached before you've come to coach people, which is absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. Um, and one thing I loved again is there's the lesson in the process. So, mm -hmm. like, I totally believe in hard work as well. In the last ten years, I've just been pushing myself to new heights. Like, I just literally just have to push and push and push. If I just start feeling comfortable in an area, I push harder. Hey, <laughs> sorry. So, I'm... so I I loved today. Like, I've never done a, a live for an hour. Really. Um, I actually thought we were going to stop at 30 minutes. So oh, when it dear. came off, I'm like, what just happened? I'm you know? a talker. I'm a talker. I no, but you know what, day. though? You, you, you know your stuff. Thank you. And, yeah, I think, I think you... Because they are talkers who don't quite know their stuff. But mm. then your, your interview for me kind of felt like when I had a chat with Dr. Trim. When somebody mm. knows their stuff, it's just so much easier to to get in there and thank you so yeah. much for sharing yourself with us thank you so much for sharing your discovery and your creation of purpose um guys if you want to get coached i need to get coached by my <laughs> <laughs> i'm here i'm here so thank thank you for coming on i'm sending you some virtual hugs oh uh, received Received. And my love to your beautiful, gorgeous son. Oh, uh, thank you, Mikey. He is so oh. gorgeous. And thank you. Thank you for just sharing yourself with the world. I mean, I think for me, I also think that purpose starts when we are ready to be vulnerable with the world that we are ready to serve. Yes. Um, yes. Because a lot of people, I find when I coach my clients, a lot of people think purpose is something that you pull out of a shelf uh, whilst you live your life. Mm, but I mm. feel that part of, for me personally, part of the life that I've lived, talk about cancer, big brother, whatnot, part of that has yeah. literally pushed me towards where I am today. So thank you so much for being honest. Nice. Thank you so much for loving us. And thank have you. a fantastic week. Thank you so much. God bless you for doing this. Your lives are awesome. You're doing an amazing job. Amen. Keep keep shining a light on this. Keep being a light. All right? Thank You're doing you. great stuff. Thank you so much.